is the following 4x4 four four matrix A invertible. Now, if I want to test invertibility of a matrix, I have a few options. We could apply one of our recipes for computing an inverse. If the inverse actually comes out, makes sense, then you're definitely going to be invertible. A simpler test, since we're not asked to actually produce the inverse, is to check the determinant. A matrix is going to be invertible if and only if the determinant is non-zero. So we're going to compute the determinant. The idea here, though, is not to do a cofactor expansion along any row or column. We want to apply row or column operations and track out how those operations affect your determinant. Now, in this case, I'm only going to use row operations, but we'll have analogous rules for the columns. Now, how do the row operations affect the determinant? Okay, first one, if we switch any two rows, we're going to multiply our determinant by minus 1. If I take any row, multiply through by scalar, that's going to multiply your determinant by that same scalar. And then if I take any row, add a multiple of another row, that's going to have no effect on the determinant at all. So we're going to get a lot of mileage out of rule 3. Now, let's take a look at what we're trying to do. The idea is I'm going to do a cofactor expansion down column 4, but before we do that, we're going to turn the minus 1 and the 2 into zeros. That way, I only have to compute cofactor expansion along one term. Now, to get these to zeros, what do I need to do? We're going to take row 3, add row 2, and then we're going to take row 4, subtract off twice row 2. When we do that, we're going to get this matrix as follows. Now, I can do a determinant. So we're going to expand down column 4. What's the rule? You take your entry, okay, you write your entry down somewhere on the side. You're going to multiply it by minus 1 to the row plus column number. So in this case, we're only going to have one term that comes out. We're going to have the 1. We're going to multiply it by minus 1 to the 2 plus 4, which gives me a 6. And then we're going to take the minor. So I take the determinant of what I get when I cross out the row and column that our entry lives in. So I cross out that column, cross out that row. What's left over, we're going to take the determinant. So I have 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 1. Now, we could use our diagonal trick for 3 by 3 matrices. Okay, go down 3 diagonals to the right multiplying, subtract off 3 diagonals to the left multiplying. But instead, let's do some more row operations. So here, what can we do? I want to turn this 1 here into a 0, this minus 3 into a 0. Then what happens? Well, the idea is going to be we take row 2, subtract off row 1, and I take row 3, add 3 row 1. When we do that, we get this matrix here. And now I can do our diagonal trick, but most of the terms are going to wind up going to 0. So what happens? We're going to get this diagonal here, the 1, 1, 2. Okay, if I take the other two, they're going to hit these zeros. And then if I go to the left, we're only going to get the diagonal 1, 1, 5. And then we subtract. So our determinant's going to be, okay, this term goes to a 1, and then I have 2 minus 5 gives me a minus 3. That's not equal to 0, so my matrix is invertible. Now, if we want to check our work, okay, we have another exercise where we just compute this determinant with a straight-up cofactor expansion, and that's going to give us the minus 3 also.